All right. Hi there, folks. Uh, me again, Brian Wenzel, your guide into all things martial arts cinema related. Why? Why? Who the hell are you to ask me that? Well, of course, I'm going to answer because I'm doing the video here. Why, of course, because, boom, I know Kung Fu. And uh, so I'm over here doing this thing. By the way, you might have noticed I am a dual-armed reviewer again. Uh, I did not do a special features version for Return of the One-Armed Swordsman as much as I love that particular film. I'm going to kind of do the special features ones a little bit more here and there instead of trying to do one for each of them. This is a time thing, and then on top of that, I get like three views for every special features, and I'm pretty sure at least one of them is me checking to see if the damn thing uploaded, so... Uh, if you like my special features, if you're one of those two other people, uh, by all means, let me know, and uh, I'll, you know, I'll hit it a little bit harder, but uh, I think I'm going to be a little bit more selective on that, but that's okay, let's move on. Uh, as always, I want you folks to go out, if you can... Please support Traditions with a Z at the end. Dot US. Don the Dragon's Wolf, or Don the Dragon Wilson's clothing line. Oh wait, by the way, he's such a cool guy that if you go over there and you support his other project with the lovely Cynthia Rothrock called The Martial Arts Kid, not only are you getting to contribute to that, not only are you getting cool stuff because it's a kick to starter thing, but they're going to go ahead and send you a promo code so you can go over there and get $10 off any purchase from Traditions.us. How cool is that shit? I wouldn't be that fucking cool if I were running this stuff and everything. I'd just be like, great. You went over there and you gave money to my Kickstarter thing. That sure was cool of you. I'm going to give you some cool stuff for that. Uh, I don't feel like giving you a promo code. <laughs> so, uh, you know, just uh, you're getting enough. But Don the Dragon Wilson is a much better man than I. So, um, so he's going ahead and doing that. Uh, so even more reason to check that out than than the reasons that I've given you previously. And on top of that, J. Lee, J-A-E-L-E-E, -E, Kings of Kung Fu, all one word, at Facebook. Please check it out. It's another Kickstarter thing. This is, and we don't have a lot of time here, folks, unfortunately. Uh, you know, but it's not an unattainable goal. Please check it out. He's making this awesome-looking uh, martial arts video game. I contributed. I would not lie to you, folks. I would for money, though, and no one's paying me, so I'm telling you the truth. I do support these things. That's why I pitch them. Please go ahead and check that out. Now, aside from all that, what the hell am I doing here? Why do I have a Yoohoo thing? Strawberry Yoohoo in juice box format. Only on this show, folks. Why do I have this? Because I'm thirsty and because I bought a case of this stuff. Um, remember, kids, shake your Yoohoo before you drink it. Okay, aside from yoo related things, what the fuck am I doing here? Well, you see, turns out, a few days ago, a little man, well, not a little man, but, you know, a man, uh, by the name of Mr. Jerry Trimble Jr., uh, was celebrating his 53rd birthday. Thank you, Facebook, for that one. Um, and I was intending to do a movie on his birthday. Unfortunately, it was on... Uh, one of my work days, and I was doing a video, I wasn't liking the way it was going, so I decided I'm going to wait until I actually have the time to do this. So boom, here I am. And so BOOM! One Man Army, starring BOOM! Jerry Trimble with the BOOM! Ridiculous red jumpsuit apparatus. <laughs> one, of these day one of these days, I'm going to be able to put in a band pun for a band that I actually fucking like. God, fucking red jumpsuit batter. But I couldn't... I Come on, I had to. Anyway, yes, Jerry Trimble stars in Live by the Fist, the 1993 martial arts spectacular. See? There he is. I'm not lying. In a non-red jumpsuit. <laughs> As I point to his fucking crotch. As in a non-red jumpsuit situation. By the way, he does not wear a red jumpsuit in any of this. And uh, I'm going to be honest, I actually, before I got into Jerry Trimble, I remember seeing this film at, like, FY, or not FYE, like, disc replay and, like, replays it. And I saw this thing, and I'm like, that just looks ridiculous. So uh, here's a little tip to you fine folks who go over there and come with these DVD covers. This, this thing right here might not be your the best way to attract attention. So, um, but, as it turned out, Jerry Trimble's amazing, and I ended up loving his films. 
So, of course, I had to go over there in honor of his 53rd birthday. That was a few days ago. I'm going to go ahead and do one of his films. That's that's what I'm going to do. And that's what I'm doing. Because, like, I'm doing Live by the Fist. You already know that. Um, like I said, 1993. Directed, interesting fun fact, directed by Ciro H. Santiago. What's cool about that? Well, it turns out that uh, he went over there and directed some of Jerry's other films. Like, boom! Stranglehold. See? Much better cover. What the hell, folks? And, uh, boom! Live by the Fist. A little, a little bit better covered. Still not red jumpsuit thing. Um, not a cool thing about, uh, Sirio H. Santiago. He's dead! Sorry, buddy! Uh, I didn't have anything to do with that. You died before I knew that you were a person. But you were old, so... Good trucking along. Uh, you directed some pretty cool films. Anyway... So yes, uh, with that said, I'm going to bust into this because we're at about five minutes now. I've been pitching stuff and yammering on like a moron, so what time is it? Synapsis. So let's go into a little synapsis of this here film. So this film, like I said, starring Mr. Jerry Trimble Jr., who, by the way, kickboxing champion, Jerry Golden Boy Trimble, and uh, if you look up Jerry Trimble on YouTube... You can find uh, an awesome little interview he did where he explains how he got that whole name that I'm not going to go into because I would butcher the story. So, yeah. Um, so, okay. Jerry's over there, right? He's Jerry. Jerry Trimble Jr. And he's also, as it turns out, Mr. Jerry Pelt. Uh, Jerry Pelt, turns out, he's this guy who was over there back in small town America doing his thing. Kind of a rowdy customer, as it were. Just what? I think we're past the point in our. I'm pretty sure we're past the point in our society where you can really be like, as a rowdy customer, and not because you shouldn't be able to say it. I just don't think there's any rowdy customers left. Damn it, we, you know, we've just. What have we done to this country, folks? What have we done to this country when we can't even have rowdy customers anymore? Ah, you. -hoo. Um, but yes. Kind of a rowdy, rough-and-tumble customer in his youth. and uh, Grew up, though, to be a martial arts champion. He's over there doing martial arts champion thing. Teaching the youth. The youth. <laughs> um, but he's over there. What happens? He ends up getting kind of a bad phone call. Turns out that uh, his grandfather, who's a judge in small town USA. I think he's called, like, Jackson County or something. I don't know. I didn't bother paying attention. Who gives a shit? Um... <laughs> But it turns out that, yeah, he died. So, of course, Jerry's got to go back. He's got to lay his grandfather to rest because he's a cool guy like that. He gets back and he's driving his little VW Bug, which is how you can tell this was still in the 90s. Uh, he's over there driving his VW Bug and he's just, just doing his thing. And uh, apparently, uh, you know, this group of other rowdy customers... <laughs> Apparently they just, uh, they don't appreciate, a, you know, maybe Bumblebee wasn't their favorite character on the original run of Transformers. Yeah, that's right. I threw it at fucking Transformers thing. Reference. Uh, and real Transformers, by the way. None of this Michael Bay nonsense. Fuck you, Michael Bay. Fuck you very much. That, I could go on a whole thing about that, but I'm not going to go into a whole rant about Michael Bay. Or am I? No. Maybe later, but not right now. Um... Because we're honoring Mr. Jerry Trimble. I'm not going to mess things up with talk of Michael Bay. Uh, so, they decide they're going to be, you know, a bunch of rowdy customers, like I said, and run them off the road. And Jerry Trimble's like, what are you doing? Why are you... What are you doing? Uh, and they're over there and they're like, we're obviously a stereotypical gang from the 90s who, by the way... One of the kind of weird things about this movie, there sure are a lot of Filipino-looking people in small-town USA. Um, not saying that that's a bad thing, but at a certain point in the film, you're kind of watching this, and you're just like... I mean... Maybe? <laughs> I... <laughs> I thought, I thought most small town USA players like, you know, Irish, German immigrants and stuff like that, but it was just to say that maybe there weren't a bunch of Filipino folks that founded small town Filipino USA. I don't know. Um, but yeah, after dealing out some awesome revenge ass kicking, uh, 
for them going over there and running this poor bug off the road. He makes his way to his grandfather's funeral, where he meets up with this chick named Melissa Moore. Melissa Moore, kind of a minor scream queen horror films and stuff like that. And, uh, by the way, folks, I know it's completely and utterly shameless of me, but I will say this, because if I can get one more person to watch this film, uh, Miss Melissa Moore, which, ooh, you can see right there, not a bad looking lady, right? Right? Well, she gets some sexy time in this. So, like I said, I don't mind selling my dignity if I can help out the integrity of one man army. <laughs> um, but she's over there and she's like, look, man, Jerry, this place has changed since you were gone. There's like gambling and prostitution and illegal immigrants being brought in through a mine. Apparently that mine goes all the way to the Philippines, folks. They try to, and I mean, I could, I could, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. And I might be. Uh, but they do, they say, you know, they're, they're like Hispanic. And that's what they say. And they, maybe they are Hispanic, but to me, they look kind of Filipino. Um, or, you know, and I mean, I, I'm not trying to harsh on the Philippines. I'm not even harshing on the Philippines. Get out of my fucking video if you don't... I'm not racist, damn it. <laughs> Just, I'm sorry. Um, but yes, yeah, so they apparently have a mind that intersects between small town America... Uh, the Philippines, and Hispanic land. I don't even want to say, I don't even want to say a country, because then people will be like, why does it have to be for that country? I don't know. No one will do that. No one watches my videos. And, eh, whatever. Anyway, so yeah. There's all this stuff going on. It's bad times. And, uh, but in the middle of this, just, you know, like a big old puppy dog, this guy shows up, Mr. Dennis Hayden, who, uh, has been in films. <laughs> I looked the guy's credits up, I just, I didn't, I didn't really recognize the guy from anything, but he's this big old drunk puppy dog guy who's like, dude, you're back, woo, let's go get drunk and kick some ass, cause that's what you do in small town USA, and Jerry's like, yeah, why the hell not, we might as well, I'm gonna get some sexy time later with uh, Miss Melissa Moore, so I can, I can, you know, I can hold off on that right now, so they go over there, they go down into an underground fighting place, Underground fighting in small town Filipino USA, of course. Jerry Trimble beats the match because you knew he would. And uh, in the meantime, it's like, dude, why is all this? There's stuff going on. What the hell's going on? Well, it turns out that there's this guy played by Mr. Paul Holmes. This did dude Sharp. Uh, I think it's like Sharperson or something. But we're just gonna call him Sharp for fucking sake of ease. And uh, he's over there. Back it up, by the way, I've got my little cheat sheet over here, just to be completely fair. Uh, but he's over there backing up the corrupt sheriff, because there's always corrupt sheriff in small town USA. The late, great Mr. Rick Dean, uh, who was in some of uh, uh, Don Dragon Wilson's films. It was Blood Fizz 3, I want to say, and some other awesome films. So, sorry, Mr. Rick Dean. Uh, but he plays the corrupt sheriff, and, you know... Standard corrupt sheriff things and all that stuff, and of course Jerry's like, "You're all rotten." He's like, "I don't care. <laughs> what do you what do you think accusing me of that is gonna get you?" Um. Oh, sweet, delicious you. Um. So anyway, things kind of go from bad to worse, and you know. Just kind of, everything's just sort of falling in on itself, and it's like, like I said, there's like legal, immigr or legal immigrants being brought in by this dude Sharp, and they're like, being forced to work, you know, terrible hours, no breaks, and all that stuff and everything. And, uh, Melissa Moore, she's over there, she's trying to get this out and about. And, of course, in the meantime of this whole thing, she's getting too close to the truth. So, of course... Uh, she's over there doing her thing. Well, what happens? Well, she's over there just swimming naked in fucking lake with Jerry Trimble doing her thing, and she gets shot. Oh, no. Jerry Trimble's over there, and he's like, no, but guess who's there to save the day? His big old dog, but not Mr. Dennis Hayden, an actual big old dog, uh, who's sort of his sidekick in the movie, besides Dennis Hayden. Um, 
Big old dog shows up, bites the dude on the arm. Jerry Trimble's like, what's going on? This is madness. And so he's over there. He's trying to figure this whole thing out. He starts getting suspicious. I wonder how my grandfather really died. And of course, he, well, you know, I, they never actually said how he died. I suppose you just assume he was old. But, you know, I mean, I, it makes me wonder, like, now that I think about it, it's like, you know, like, so, I mean, when my grandpa died, I didn't question it. I mean, he, you know, he was old. and I was, He was old and in a home. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds about right. I mean, no offense to my grandpa. He was awesome, but, you know, he was 70 plus years old when he died. It was just kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But now I'm starting to think about this in context of this film. Like, maybe he was trying to bring down, like, some sort of illegal immigration drug ring in his home. And, oh, man. I don't even care if that's real or not. That's My grandpa was a hero. Um, <laughs> anyway... <laughs> it's even better if you knew my grandpa. But anyway, anyway. Um, I still got one grandpa left. I still got one grandpa left. So anyway. Um, <laughs> so he finds out his grandfather was murdered. And, you know, it's like, look. This isn't going well. There's got to be some justice around here. People are getting shot. Grandpas are getting killed left and right. Filipino gangs are running Volkswagen bugs off the road. And so that's not good. Not good times. No one wants to live in that fucking city. <laughs> God help you if you show up to town in a VW bug with your grandpa in tow. You're just fucked. Um, even worse if you have your... <laughs> your naked girlfriend swimming in a lake in the back seat. I don't know. But anyway, so he finally decides, look, the only way that anything's going to get done, we got to take down Mr. Rick Dean, the sheriff. But we're not going to do it all vigilante style, even though he does that a little bit. He's like, no, we're going to do this the right way. I'm going to run for sheriff. I'm going to take back the town. Take it back, Jerry Trimble. So he decides to take back the town. And uh, turns out, lo and behold, that's not too hard because corruption, Filipino gangs, Hispanic Filipino gangs... Going over there and killing grandpas and stuff. You know, it's not it's not a hard sell. <laughs> His platform could have been, vote for me. Your grandpa won't die. I mean, he... Oh, no! <laughs> One more example of politicians not keeping their promises. Anyway, anyway. Um, <laughs> cryogenic freezing, I guess. Um, they have that in 1993? What is it? Anyway, um, so, okay. <laughs> Because it has nothing to do with the movie. Um, so yeah, he's over there. He's got a... Gets his... You know, gets a whole new group of deputies. And Dennis Hayden's his new, uh, you know, his new second in command and that whole thing. And they got to take down Rick Dean and uh, Sharperson. I know I was going to call him Sharp, but for whatever reason, it just sounds better if I call him Sharperson in my head. So we got to take him down and... All right, he's doing pretty good. He's fucking up their organization and everything like that. But it turns out things aren't so good. Guess why? It turns out Mr. Dennis Hayden, a.k.a. Big Puppy Dog Number 2, uh, yeah, it turns out he's not such a good dude. It seems he, you know, he likes a little bit of the uh, booger sugar, as it were. And, uh, yeah, he's kind of working for those folks. They're like, look, you got to kill him. And he's like, yeah, all right, that's it. Yeah, it's fair enough. <laughs> you guys keep giving me cocaine. At some point, I gotta pay you back. So he goes over there, proceeds to murder his wife for reasons. <laughs> Murders his wife. And he goes over there, he decides he's gonna... <laughs> Guy goes over there, puts a, f puts a fucking shotgun shell in his wife. But when it comes to the guy he was sent there to kill, he just knocks him out with the butt of his gun and then lights the building on fire. Like, was it really... I mean, you know, don't get me wrong, I'm rooting for Jerry Trimble here, I really am, but it just sounds like a bad plan, you know? And then, like I said, it's, I would say, oh, but the emotional relationship... Dude, you just fucking blew your wife away. You can't argue that point. You just, just shoot the fucker. Anyway. But, of course, Jerry Trimble survives, and guess what? It's time to get some serious vengeance. Uh, so he goes over there. He gets his shit together. He's got his dog and 
you know, they got to go take down the evil organization because that's what happens. It's Rick Dean's all over there. He's got Dennis Hayden. He's got Sharp. He's got his corrupt deputies. He's got a man with a katana, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Mexican. <laughs> oh, how many... <laughs> how many Hispanic folks do you know who just have a katana? That's all I'm saying, folks. That's all I'm saying. I'm not, I'm not trying to make any point against anything. It's just, come on. Come on, folks. You can't do that. You can't... I'm sorry. You're not going to sell me on this whole thing. But anyway. Um... <laughs> when, <laughs> when the settlers from Spain... When the settlers from Spain got here, they went over there and had the first Thanksgiving with the Irish. <laughs> anyway. So, alright. He goes over there. He beats some ass. He's got his dog. His girl survives. Melissa Moore. She's alive. Um, to, I'm sure, go on to be hot and naked and many other things. Um, and he gets his VW bug back, and he's the sheriff, and he wins, and, you know, goes over there, it's like, Dean, I'm Sharp, Paul Holmes, Mr. Sharperson, he's over there, he's being a prick, and Dean Kane's over there. Or Rick Dean, why do I keep calling him Dean Kane? That's a completely different actor. Rick Dean's all over here just like, you know what, I'm done taking this abuse, I'm gonna fucking shoot you in the back. And he, that's what he does. So good for you, Rick Dean, you set a goal and you stuck to it. You shot Sharperson in the back. Jerry's over there, he's like, alright, good go, and that's one less person I have to go over there and uh, drop a car on. Rick Dean's like, that seems awfully specific. Oh no! And that's how Rick Dean died. Anyway, um, so he's dead. Now you've only got one person left. Of course, you got Mr. Dennis Hayden, King Douchebag himself. He's over there. He's like, I got your girl. And he's, Jerry Trimble's like, you're a bitch. And Dennis Hayden's like, I don't take kindly to that at all. We're going to wrestle. Um, I mean, I'm not kidding. That's legitimately how he fakes him out in this. He's just basically like, you're a bitch. And he's like, brr, I'm not a bitch. And he's like, I don't know. I heard from some folks, a.k.a. you're a mom. You're a bitch. <laughs> and he just decides to attack him like a grizzly bear. Um, Jerry Trimble beats his ass, of course, and leaves him hanging. Leaves him hanging. Uh, he wins the day, and all is well, and... Uh, Cave is closed off and all that stuff. No more, uh, no more Hispanic immigrants. I can't, I'm sorry, I can't get over that. You gotta, you gotta watch the movie. It's, it's a little ridiculous, but it's fun. It's, and that's the thing. That, cause that's pretty much the movie. Sorry, so here's the thing. Like, what do I have to say about One Man Army? Um, look, Jerry Trimble, and I mean, this might be a good or the bad thing. I don't care anymore. Jerry Trimble... Wasn't, you know, he didn't reach the the heights of, you know, Don the Dragon Wilson or some of the other guys, even Mr. Gary Daniels. Um, but the guy's been with some of the, you know, the guy's worked with some of the best people. And the few films that he starred in, you know, I'm going to say maybe like a little over half a dozen or so. Uh, the films that he starred in were awesome. Uh, you know, yeah, they're, you know, kind of generic. Uh martial arts movies from the 90s, but I'll say this for Jerry Trimble, he did not have the generic kind of style of doing things, you know, he, his first film was in Hong Kong with Jet Li, so he really was able to bring some pretty cool stuff to it that you didn't really see from guys like, you know, like I said, you know, like Gary Daniels or Don the Dragon Wilson, who each had their own unique style, but, you know, Jerry Trimble was able to bring in more of a Hong Kong style to his uh, to his films and to his fighting in particular, and uh, which is kind of cool because if you're a fan, maybe you're just a fan of Hong Kong cinema. Well, I mean, look, I'm not going to say this is, you know, masterful art, you know, or anything, but it's it's a really fun movie, and if action is what you're looking for, not only are you going to get it, but like I said, if you're more of a Hong Kong guy. Jerry Trimble's actually not that hard to get into. You get longer takes, you know, the fights are a little bit more complex than you, again, you would see from some of the other guys. And that's, by the way, that's not a knock against them. That's just 
the crappy fucking editing style that uh, most films do it here. Uh, not not so much anymore, to be fair. Um, but back in the 90s, that was how they did it. Lots of just cuts and stuff, you know. And You just want to see ass-kicking, you know. You want to see Jerry Trimble beat the hell out of some people and stuff. You don't want to see... Oh, kick, reactions, you know, just fucking, just see, show him kick the guy, you morons. And Jerry Trimble was great for that, you know, he, I mean, the guy had a great physicality to him. Like I said, you didn't always get from some of these other kickboxer guys. Um, you know, and he had a cool, you know, he just had a cool presence to him. Like, he didn't come off as the standard, despite the fact that, you know, he sometimes played the standard, you know, hapless main character. He didn't come off like that, you know, he had this, he has this kind of gravelly voice that, you know, sounds like he's just got a cigarette stuck in his throat, and it's cool, because, it, you know, again, you just, he doesn't come off as the standard main character, which is one of the reasons why I like him so much, and why I enjoy his film so much. As for the, this particular film itself, what do I have to say about this film? Um, at some point during my review, you might have started thinking to yourself, that sounds a little bit like a movie that I saw The Rock in called uh, Walking Tall. And yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, did they steal it? No, not really. It turns out that, you know, I guess the whole Walking Tall thing, I guess it's actually... And I wasn't aware of this, and maybe I'm dumb for that, but... And, I, and it's not like I just found this out, though, by the way. Fuck you if you thought that. Like, I, I've known about this for a little while now. But I didn't when I first bought this film. Uh, no, you know... That whole story, it's based loosely off a true story, and they did a movie and stuff. Is this film that film? Kind of. It definitely takes its own take on things. But so did, you know, The Rock's version of it. So, um, you know, so like I said, there's that to take into account. If you like Walking Tall, you might like this one, or you might hate this one for not being Walking Tall. Um, aside from that, I mean, it's a simple story. You get some cool action to it. Um, this is a part where I try to be serious. Uh, you do get some legitimately cool action scenes in it. Um, you know, unfortunately, it, you know, as is generally standard in American martial arts films, you know, Jerry doesn't really get, like, a, one really solid opponent. He does have Dennis Hayden at the end, but, eh, you know. He, he does fine, but, you know. Um, but you do get a lot of great, like, you know, just sort of group fights and things like that, you know, and that that's very cool. Um... What else to take away from this particular film? Um, like I said, you get to see Melissa more naked. That's always a fucking plus, I guess. I mean, you know, I don't know. You know, maybe your, I don't know what your preferences are, and and I respect your your preferences and your decisions. I'm not, you know, I'm just saying. Unless you're a pedophile, fuck that. You quit that shit. Um. Anyway, uh, I don't know. I, you know, I mean, it's, it, like I said, it's just a simple movie. It's, you know, just does what it does, and it it's fairly standard for, you know, for the genre and, you know, that particular run of it. And it's just good fun. I think so. Yeah, I think you should think so. So think so, damn it. I got Strawberry Yoo-Hoo. Do you have Strawberry Yoo-Hoo? No. So listen to the man who found Strawberry Yoo-Hoo at 2 in the morning. <sighs> Saddest sound in the world. Right there, um, but yes, and I guess that's what I have to say about this film. Aside from that, once again, support all the things I talked about at the beginning of the thing. Oh, by the way, happy belated 53rd birthday to Mr. Jerry Trimble and to 51st birthday to Mr. Gary Daniels. Who, like I said, I will be doing a review for one of his films, probably my very next review. Is there gonna be a special features for this one? Probably not, um, <laughs> but. That said, again, happy birthday, Mr. Mr. Jerry Trimble. You are truly awesome. I enjoy the hell out of your films. Let's get you in some more leading roles. Let's, come on, let's team you up with Don the Dragon Wilson or Ian Jacklin or, you know, Gary Daniels or something. There's got to be a way to make this happen, folks. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, so, because when the Golden Kilder, kill a when the Golden Killa came to my house, I had to battle him with the hard gun. But then, the capital conspiracy went down, and I had to bust out my flaming swords. For all those reasons and more, folks, I am Brandon Wenzel. I review martial arts films. Why do I do that? Because, of course, folks, I know kung fu. 
Please enjoy these film or please enjoy these videos. Please share them. Do all that good stuff. Please support the things I talked about. And if you're so inclined, go ahead and wish Mr. Jerry Trimble a happy belated birthday. Signing off, folks. Have a good one.